Hello, hello! Hi, everyone! Time for some free stream chatting. Yes, hi, everyone. It's me. It's me who'll be streaming today. <laughs> Just to answer your question. Yeah. Hi! Hi, OC Central. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> yes. Uh, hello! Hello! <laughs> Yes, it's me. I'm here. But I'm really excited for today's stream. Because recently, I've been on a background phase, I think. I really love... I really love practicing backgrounds, actually. Because I feel, I feel like I got the hang of them, more or less. And now it's just a matter of just trying things out. And yeah, I hope you guys... Try backgrounds with me. Ooh, what type of forest am I going to be drawing? Okay, good question. Because what won the poll is post-apocalyptic. So, I kind of have something in mind. So yeah, we'll be going over the process anyway, so. Of how to draw any forest. Doesn't have to be specifically post-apocalyptic. Yeah, what Soundwave said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I already have like an idea for it. Wait, where's Kevin? He should be here soon. Or maybe he's already here. Maybe he's being sneaky sneaky. Like he usually is. Yeah, Teach Person is here. Indeed. Instructor Iggy is here. I just draw cities being destroyed by giant lizards. Lord. Kaiju, man. Kaiju are so cool. Kevin is our mod. Valuable member of the team. Yeah, he's pretty active on the Discord as well. So he helps manages the Discord too. Yeah, cool guy. <laughs> yeah, since Kev's not here, we're talking behind his back. Talking behind his back. Talking about compliments. Oh my gosh. That guy? That Kevin guy? He's so reliable. What the heck? Yeah, I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking when he's not here. <laughs> draw forest no 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 not from not from three but right after three okay <laughs> that's why it's post that's why it's post apocalyptic okay it's not from it's after <clears throat> Kevin the shield yeah you know yeah soundwave I've kind of wanted to watch Godzilla stuff because I've never really been into it, but I know a handful of people who are. Because I think Godzilla is such a cool concept, you know, culturally and and just like lore-wise. <laughs> you know, giant lizard, giant radioactive lizard. But then I think culturally, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that he represents the fear. You know, the fear of post post war. And that's what he represents. That's how he destroys everything. Yeah, Godzilla minus one. I heard it was super, super good because it goes back to the roots of Godzilla, of him being a force of nature. Yeah, so I've heard, and it's really good from what people are saying. Oh, you're sick. Oof. I've been there, man. I've been there. So get well soon. Yeah, I believe Godzilla in the original was an analogy. Yeah, exactly. Like the fear, right? Of from those scars of of war. Oh man. But also, it's pretty funny because there's also what was it Kong and Godzilla, which look like <laughs> Yeah, Godzilla's pink and he looks awesome. He's radioactive pink instead of the blue. Large gecko. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and one of my favorite things too, one of my favorite videos of Godzilla is this. You probably already know if, uh, if I'm drawing it. Hold on. Once you guys recognize, you guys might recognize it. Mm 
there, bro. Let me get it. Bleh. There's a hair in my tongue. Bleh. Let me doodle. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but have you seen the draw Godzilla drop pick? Um, it's like they just put they just put the mascot on in this direction, and then they like slam him. Like no, <laughs> I love that video. Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, people, people coming in might be like, "What the heck is? What the heck are you doing? What about this is a forest?" <laughs> yeah, let's throw an actual movie. So good, classic scene. I'm gonna have the stream going on. Yeah, go do that. <clears throat> yeah, the tail side. It's so funny. Very odd looking tree, indeed. <laughs> it is a pretty weird looking tree. Here. Hello. Hello, hello. Ooh, a funky looking cat, you say? Okay. Let me draw a funky looking cat. Aren't broccolis like trees? So, yeah? I guess you could say that. Okay. Funky looking cat. There you go. <laughs> and the show hair. Yeah. I mean 300 yet. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. This is free stream chat. So, free stream chat. Just talk about anything. And that's how it usually goes anyway. You know, I try to teach my lesson, and then I showcase the drawing, and then you can talk about anything right after the little lesson, you know? Because we still gotta make this educational, okay? So, yeah. I know a lot of people in the poll, they suggested snow, and I really would have loved to do snow, but... But if I do snow, the trees have to be dead i think <laughs> for it to be accurate so i decided to pass on snow for now and also i don't feel like drawing pine trees for this one. Ooh, which kaiju victim i think it was the dragon right it was was it the Ghidorah? i think no it can't be Ghidorah is the three-headed dragon but i'm not sure i, I don't remember This looks like super, super lame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh. How long will it take to make the One Piece? <laughs> I wouldn't have mentioned One Piece actually until you mentioned it, L. Ooh. What is the meaning of life of the cat on the building? I think it's just living his best life, that cat, you know? Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Boop, boop. Oh yeah, and somebody mentioned Powerpuff Girls. Ooh, Megalon. It's a humanoid yet insect-like kaiju with drills for hands. I <laughs> just get Dora have hands. Okay, I don't remember. To be fair, literally I have bare bones knowledge of the monster verse. I just think it's cool. So I don't know the in-depth lore. TBH. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Kevin is busy. No, Kevin. And somebody mentioned Powerpuff Girls, so I'm gonna try to draw them from memory. I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember what they. Oh my gosh, this is horrifying. <laughs> okay. This blossom. <laughs> Horrifying chameleon looking blossom. <laughs> Is this really what they look like? I just really suck at Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not joking. Kinda ugly in from memory. 
Looks like Pomni. It sort of does. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna repurpose this to Pomni. Here. Let me purpose this real quick. Here. And then here. Here's Pomni now. <laughs> here. And I remember she had bangs. Okay, so remember like this. And then I will adjust her hat. There you go. Omni Amazing Digital Circus. There. And there you go. You got Amazing Digital Circus. You have Godzilla shoes. Okay, that's kind of funny. Uh, they'll, they'll be... Oh, actually, no, we have time. We have time before stream officially starts. There. I'm gonna give them some good shoes. There you go. There. And then, shoe. Perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, the op <laughs> the creature, la creatura. It's it's this one, right? Hold on. I know what creature you're talking about. This one, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yippee! Yeah. Hi! Hi, Quinn! Let's see. I got... El Wee Wee. And then... I also like this meme where it's like... It's like this emoji with like really sparkly eyes. And then he's like, wow, I like this one. I don't know what it's called, but I just see it around. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My Gota bro? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, heck yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My Gota bro. Yeah, honestly, I'm more of a Bulalo guy than, than Goto, but yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, the creature. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what time is it? Okay, we got two minutes. Even better, I know. I'm not really too into thing, the Goto, to be honest. It's not my go-to. Yeah, Bulalo. Yeah, for those who don't know, Bulalo... Is beef, beef uh, soup, Filipino, Filipino dish, very good. And both autumn and added creatures. Kare kare, hmm. I won't say because Filipinos are gonna get me. <laughs> I'm not too into it, to be honest. <laughs> Mostly because I haven't tried it in a while. Maybe if I try it, maybe I'll like it. You know. Maybe I was like, it was one of those things where maybe I was too young to appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is Pomni from on top left right here. Yep. You. <laughs> oh, yeah. The good cooking. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I will try. Yep. What time is it? Okay, it's just about time. Here, here, we have a beautiful pre-stream chat, vaguely related to, to a forest. <laughs> oh god, to the <laughs> But yeah, still, still no Kevin. Hope he comes in soon, but it should be fine. But for those who just came in, welcome, welcome. So it's just about time to start the stream. And... <laughs> Yeah, today we'll be drawing a forest, and you wouldn't be able to tell from this beautiful, beautiful doodle that people made with me. <laughs> but this stream is meant to be a companion piece to the how to draw tree stream. So if you want to draw, if you want to learn how to draw an individual tree, then go check out that tree. 
And I'll go over hand in hand with this one. And for this stream, I really want to focus on on teaching how to draw a forest because forests, you know, they're very dense, and it's hard to hard to keep track of every single tree and to make an impactful image. So I really want to talk about what goes into making a really good forest drawing. But of course, before we begin, oh. There you go! Kevin's here! Maybe Kevin was here the whole time, and he was just listening in. But yeah, he heard me talking behind his back about how reliable he is. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to start. Yeah, Kevin Hype. Yeah, say, have, say hi to Kevin in chat. Yeah, all highs all around. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> But <laughs> Kevin needs to try Bolalo. Yeah, it'd be nice. Everybody needs to try Bolalo. Nice and warm. Warms the soul. But yeah, I'm gonna try. Or not, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna start the, the stream now. So, in case you guys didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. And we art nerds, we gotta stick together, guys. So, if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out our links to the to our social media in the description below and check out our website for class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we're also an art school. And if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free stuff like this stream, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon for uh, files, for working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on classes. And you can also support us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub, bad sub badges. So, yeah. Please check those out. Please support us. And thank you so much. We appreciate all sorts of support. Yeah. <laughs> Bull and buffalo hybrid. It does sound like that. <laughs> oh, you did. Ah, uh, it's gonna be nice. Camps are so chill. So for those who don't know, uh, Wing Canvas is having winter camps in the 27th. So feel free to register if you want to draw with me. You know, learn a thing or two. And just a nice chill drawing uh, session with me. Yeah, go check that out. Limited spots. Go check it out. Also, we'll be drawing every day for winter camps. So it'll be nice. Ooh, the latency feels very low. Okay, let me double check. Uh, let me double check on my end then. Stream settings. Okay. Hmm. Seems like mine is ultra. It's already on ultra low. Or right, let's see. Latency is still very low. There you go. That's okay. Ooh, Josh scan. Yeah. But. Yeah, I want to talk about our little itinerary for today, and then we'll go over the submissions. So look forward to that. So, forests. So what I really want to talk about for today is the composition and the values. So I'd say these two are pretty important when it comes to drawing a forest because more often than not, people who don't know how to draw forests or aren't familiar, they just kind of put the trees like this, right? They just kind of draw them in like a single line. And I also mentioned values because people, like how do you shade? How do you shade a forest? Okay, so a forest is a whole bunch of trees. And what I see most people do, right, is they do just a classic, you know, put the base color and then just put a shadow on it. But then it doesn't really give that much depth to it. So this is why I want to talk about these two. Because composition and values will really improve how you draw your forest. Yeah, look forward to it. And then our final illustration, what won the poll, is a post-apocalyptic 
forest. So yes. Apocalyptic. That's so wonderful. So I'm super super excited to draw that. But yeah. Let me double check. What chat is happening? Oh, you're having... Oh, no. <clears throat> yes. I'm sure... I'm sure it'll go well. And I wish you the best. <laughs> wish you the best shadow beans. Shadow bean arts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just uh, back reading chat right now. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. So I'm gonna just continue on with the submissions before we begin. And hold up, show there we go. <laughs> yeah. So the theme for this month is amazing architecture, and this one's very gray. And let me see. Uh, submarine and airplane streams. Give me an idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for watching them. And yeah, I hope it goes well, Quinn. Drawing your dragon sub, <laughs> serpent sub. It's all about the shapes, baby. And it's the same thing for here, which you'll see. But yeah, going back to the art submissions. Thank you so much, Gray. So this is their first shot at drawing perspective. So let's see. Let's see the caption that they mentioned. They said, pretty sure it doesn't count, but it it's the only actual perspective anything that I've done. So fair. I don't do much perspective either, and I'm trying to fix this, but yeah, this is wonderful. I really love the scale of things. Excuse me. And it really looks like you drew this from your perspective. I could really tell. And you did a good job of accurately getting the scale, like I mentioned, and keeping everything in perspective. Because if I had to guess, this is all based on instinct and not much of the uh, the perspective grid, which is super, super good. This is a good way to practice. So try to practice like this, where you draw without it, and then try to practice one with the perspective grid. Because that way, you have a nice collab between the two, where you know how to draw without the grid, but at the same time, you know what to take into account. I feel like that's one of the hardest things in perspective. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg. You know, what do you draw first? Do you draw the grid first? Or do you draw the the room first? I think that's one of the things I encountered. So it's different for everybody, but that's why I recommend everybody to try it. <laughs> and what else did I want to say? Yeah, the line work and the pencil work, very, very nice. You know, it feels nice and cozy in this place. <laughs> Oh, and his Lego. Ooh, build a fireplace. This one has a fireplace for the Lego Advent calendar. Nice fireplace right there. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much, Gray. Thanks so much for the submission. Super, super good. And I hope you keep trying perspective because it's worth it. Yeah, and this one is by Rock Lobster. So thank you very much for submitting. And she says that really old, crusty, this is her caption, really old, crusty perspective assignments for my first year of university. Yeah, and I really like this one. Out of all the submissions that she put down, there's four. But this is a super, super cool way to show you guys that even though it's one point perspective, right? The most basic, I'd say, perspective, it's still very powerful if done correctly. So it really makes for a nice composition, right? The middle has all the light, and then it helps you focus on these two characters. And composition-wise, it makes me feel like they're, they're on, on opposition, right? Like one person is talking about something else, and then the other is on the other side of that conversation sort of thing. That's the vibe I get. And you can tell too from the environmental storytelling, right? You can see the graffiti. They left us. No future. Oh, and I just realized there's a... <laughs> Ooh, sensor. <laughs> there you go. I did not... I didn't see that till now. 
But anyway. It's super good. You know, so it's super powerful. And also this one has lighting on it. Right? Um, well, of course it has lighting on it. But what I mean is powerful use of lighting. So that's what also... We'll also be doing that today. Mm -hmm. And what else do I want to see? Yeah, the grid too. You can see that everything leads along pretty nicely onto the vanishing point. Very good. Ooh, speaking of perspective, how would you find vanishing point in the first place without taking a photograph and tracing? Okay, let me let me make sure I understood that correctly. How would you find the vanishing point? Okay, so maybe I'll show it in a little bit. I want to talk about it. So that's why I say the chicken and the egg earlier. Because what comes first, the grid or the drawing, right? For me personally, I prefer drawing the building first. So it's like this. Right? There, and there. So, for this one, say I'm drawing a building. And I already know that the perspective is going to go like that. I just have to extend the line till it meets the, the horizon line right there. Then, right there. So now I know. That if I was drawing one point perspective, it'd be this one. And then I could just uh, extrapolate from that. And then boom. You got a nice cityscape going here. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that's my answer to your quick question. And I really would love to go over it some more. But maybe later, you know, we'll be drawing a post-apocalyptic city, after all, forest. And again, thank you so much, Lobster. I think that's about all I have to say. Wonderful, wonderful perspective. And last but not least, we got Pop Tart. And let me let me try to get this centered. Okay, perfect. There we go. So this one, if the last one was a really powerful use of one point perspective, this one's two point perspective. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy complicated. This is just a 7-Eleven. And Pop-Tart's caption is just, yay. <laughs> Yippee. And they did a really good job of getting the shapes right. And the line work especially is super nice. Works really, really well. Ooh, the bird? What bird? Is there a bird? Yeah, right there. I can see it on the top left, I guess, of the building. Yeah. <laughs> Yippee. Yeah, specifically, I'm thinking of Xenoblade 3. If you've ever... <laughs> if you ever played it with Senna. Mm -hmm. Got jump scare <laughs> the ad oh gosh. I thought you were saying Freddy Fazbear was in this drawing and I missed them. <laughs> but anyway, going back to perspective, you can see that they follow perspective really nicely. And I'm trying to think actually. If wait a minute. Hmm, I think they're following a different vanishing point, not the one on paper. I'm trying to see. There. And yeah, maybe it's just the sketches, but it's accurate enough, I'd say. And yeah, I like, I do like the little bird. I see it now. Because <laughs> I was looking at the one at the top left, you know, the little dark, dark bird right there. And let me take a look see at the, the ads. Never took a look. Yeah, eat. And then taco. It's very good. And I really enjoy this drawing. So thank you so much. And oh Gray. <laughs> yeah, Gray. I don't know if you were here earlier, but I did feature your art. So thank you so much for submitting. Nice to see you in chat. Mm -hmm. Talked about it earlier. Yeah, and what Kevin said, ditto. Thank you so much for su supporting us, watching our ads. <laughs> Helps us a lot. There we go. So now I am going to... 
go back. Go back to drawing your thing. I want to see that soon. Ooh, Sky Islands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there. And there. So, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start my forest finally. So again, like I mentioned, I want to focus on composition and values. And, and I'll show you guys my process after I clean up my file. Okay, let me name this so I don't delete it by accident. Doodle. And I'll lock it too. So when I'm drawing a forest, the first thing I like to do, like with every background, is to make a thumbnail. Because if you make a thumbnail, you'll be able to figure out the composition before it's even began. And preferably, it's good to use the whole canvas as a little base right there. Let me make it here. Yeah, so I made a little frame out of our overall canvas. But now I'm going to start figuring things out. There and there. <laughs> yeah. And thanks so much for showing up when you can. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, just mentioning all the jump scare sound waves, all the jump scare forms. Gosh, gosh. I hope the mic picks this up. I don't know if it picks it up. But I was whistling. Man, yeah, to go back to my composition here, I was thinking of adding a bridge. So I wanted to do a bridge of some sort and then a bunch of a bunch of buildings all around <clears throat> there how to draw jump scare there <clears throat> actually i don't want the bridge to end here so maybe i'll do this and this so I want to draw the big elements first, before anything else, right? There. And... I was thinking... Here. And then maybe I'll put a building here. Actually, I'll draw the edge first. Because I don't want this... I don't want this, uh... This bridge to be touching the, the building. And vice versa. I don't want the building to be touching the building. So I'm just guesstimating right now. There. And there. And then for the first part, I was kind of thinking that they'd be growing all around right here. There. And. Because after all, this has to be a forest, so I want to make it nice and dense while still being urban. There. And there. Okay, and I guess I gotta draw the rest there. Gotta draw the rest there. Also, yeah, so far this is one point perspective, but then now I'm making a two point perspective. Because I'm gonna add like a little taper. Because if it's one point perspective, this is straight, like this. But since it's a little bit angled, that means it's two point, two point perspective now. And then, yeah, here's my tip on eyeballing perspective. Is that they're supposed to taper somewhere, right? They're supposed to taper towards a vanishing point. They can sort of guesstimate based on the other lines. There. And... 
but also I didn't want to expand too much on it on perspective only where I can because again this is a forest tree I want to focus on the composition and the value so right now I'm just trying to figure out a nice nice composition is this a digital painting or drawing tutorial I'd say that you could use this for both so if you want to digitally paint then feel free to and if you want to draw with line art and stuff you totally could because regardless of what you're doing composition and value will still be super super important and right now i'm working on composition and the reason why it's really sketchy like this is because it's just the thumbnail right thumbnails are all about getting the idea across as fast as possible and i kind of don't like how small it is so maybe or not small but claustrophobic i'd say i want more skyline so i'm gonna move it to that Ooh, seven second animation for your animation clips wow we yeah animation always so so admirable So I'm just going to expand the forest a little bit. No. Yeah, right there. And I... Okay, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like this thumbnail already. Usually I would do 1 to 2. But maybe I'll stick with this one. So that I could focus on... Just... What's it called? On just rendering and coloring it in. Because I do want to focus on coloring as well, which is super important. Yeah, and let's see. What canvas size? Honestly, my canvas size, as long as it's above 1000, it's enough. Because canvas size, it'll be really important once you're printing. But when it's digital, I think you could just keep it above like a thousand that's what i like to do <laughs> so it really depends on your intention with the with the drawing i think i'll make this a little bit wider <clears throat> okay And I kind of already like this, this composition. And then I wanted a bunch of trees growing out of the, growing out of the, the building. <clears throat> yeah, welcome, welcome. Don't worry, you're just in time. And there. So this is the composition part. Right. All about figuring out the shapes and the spacing. So you can see that the way that I did it, the way that I did my composition is I made sure that everything has a nice silhouette to it. I made sure that nothing is unclear or hard to tell. For example, this bridge right here kind of frames it nicely. And then maybe I'll make just a shadow below. <clears throat> there and there. So let me modify the notes actually. Okay, right? And then what I'll say. Thumbnails. I should have put this first. Because thumbnails, super important. They help you out with composition and value. Okay, this whole frame. There. And so now we're gonna talk about values, right? Because values, what the heck? What are values? So values are the brightness and darkness of a color. It is the best way to describe it. So you can see that on here, um, 
we're about to add the shadows, right? And what I like to do is uh, I like to add a lot of contrast on where I want to focus on. And I'll expand on that in a little bit. I want to see some damage on the buildings that show something was going on. Ooh. Let's see. Hey, Godzilla reference. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that here. Because, like, there's not much space for the ground. Well, thank you. Oh, am I drawing from reference or is this something original? This is something original. But don't be ashamed if you use reference because reference can be super useful. You could copy the vanishing point and the horizon line from a photo if you'd like. <laughs> I see, I see Shadow Beam. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, talking about values, we're gonna add some some contrast to it, because what contrast means is the difference, right? <clears throat> so, for example, this and this, this is high contrast, right? This is the light and the shadow, very high contrast. But then, if it's like this and like this, that is low contrast. In the same way that this. And this, this is low contrast because there's like a little difference. So high contrast, you know, you can tell the difference between the light and the dark. And then this is low contrast. So now it's super important to know where to place those high contrast areas. So for example, there, or hmm, I'm trying to think. If I should continue on with this sketch, and maybe I'll just doodle for a little bit, see how it feels. What if the bridge collapsed? Hmm. I kind of like the composition, though, of it being framed like this. Collapse bridge. Because hmm. I'm trying to think. If it collapsed, it would be like this. Yeah, that's another thing about composition, right? You gotta see if the shapes <clears throat> are sort of competing with something. Because I feel like if the shape is like this, right? If the bridge is broken, I imagine it'll form an arrow pointing down. And then like this. So composition-wise, you also gotta look at them being a big shape. You gotta see the big shape as well. So if the bridge is fallen like this, then it means that it has to point to something on the ground and I have to rework everything. So, but if it's just broken like this, I wonder how that would look. I guess if it's broken, then I gotta draw it down here, the bridge. So I think either way, I prefer the bridge being up here. But then, you can totally do a broken bridge for yours, though. Here. <laughs> okay, what are you guys talking about? Gloves. You don't want tangents either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There, there. I think I'll move the building actually. I'll move the building a little bit back. So this is why thumbnails are so important. You could just figure out your overall overall look at the drawing before it's even started. Yeah, because even though this is post-apocalyptic, I still want to focus on the fact that this is this is a forest. It's supposed to be a lush forest that just so happens to be post-apocalyptic. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. There. Hmm. 
trying to see. Maybe I'll add more buildings in the back. And... Yeah, I'm making the building just a little bit tilted. There. And right there. Well, let me see. Actually, maybe I won't add a building there. I'll just add like... Building right here. Small building. And, and I kinda kinda like this. And then more trees over here. I have a nice forest. Oh my chat crashed. Oh good. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Uh-oh. Chat, double checking. Is chat here? Yeah, audio check. Hey yo. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube just crashed. <laughs> but I'm back. Alright, let me see. Let me see if I missed anything. Uh oh, his chat broke. It's broken. Oh no. <laughs> Never left us? Okay. The chat is broken. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I I feel like I can't cover values here. I wanna I think I've covered composition well enough. But I really wanna expand on values later on. In the later stages. <laughs> yeah, but again, I really like this composition already, and I don't feel like making another one. But if you want to make more thumbnails, right, the technique is to keep making them and revising things you don't like and things you like about it. For example, if you really like, for example, you know, the skyline, then keep the skyline. But then, if you feel like, hmm, it's a little bit claustrophobic, like earlier, then you could, you could totally, totally fix it up. So now, I'm just gonna make it bigger. <clears throat> okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. There we go. Yeah, so this is our working sketch right here. And hmm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, so Sandwave, do tell. Uh, what is the name of your red, your red kaiju? You <laughs> yeah, you gave us his weakness, but you didn't give us his name. We know he's weak to ice attacks on his back, but we don't even know his first name. Mm -hmm. Come on. Here. I want to color this in. <clears throat> Multiply. And there. Adranos. Or Adrenos. I don't know how you would pronounce it. Like Thanos. Yeah, Adranos. <laughs> like Thanos, Thanatos. Yeah, I want to share my idea actually for these trees. So this is a stroke of genius actually. <laughs> Excuse me. A stroke of genius because this is post-apocalyptic, right? And I was thinking the season fall. Oh my gosh. It's a fall season post-apocalyptic forest. Beep, beep. And there. And there. Mesh. Maybe I should make the sky a little bit brighter. Beep, beep. <coughs> Yes, even post-apocalypse forests have fall. 
Hmm, let's double check. Yeah. Yeah, someone did mention that, but I don't know. I didn't feel like it would be best. I prefer a repaired or a fully intact bridge over over the thing. Hmm. Yeah, so right now, technically this is the colors I'm putting down. I just turned my sketch into multiply so that I could I could just uh, freely put down the base color. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. The fall. <laughs> This heat makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Yeah. Forgot how the quote specifically went. Yeah. yeah, so to talk about this brush I'm using. Honestly, it's nothing special, I just like the shape. It's a default brush from Clip Studio called the Thin Gouache Brush. And I modified it so that it doesn't blend. I just modified the blend setting so that it doesn't it's an opacity brush and i just really like the shape you know it makes for some nice leaf shapes onto the drawing yeah. <clears throat> and then i want to add some green onto this Boop, boop. There we go. Just some nice green. And then at this phase, right, of the forest, you can see that my forest is kind of just a bunch of clumps right now. So it's hard to tell how many trees are actually in, in the drawing right now. So that's what you should focus on as well once you reach this point they try to figure out how many trees are actually in your in your composition here <clears throat> fall and fall yeah <laughs> there we go and i'm adding some nice yellow greens as well so that it's not just one color of a tree the plot <clears throat> and then I will figure out the... Oh yeah, you know what? I will separate these actually. I should have separated them. Hmm. Okay, I did them on one layer when I should have. Hmm. Maybe I'll trim them actually. Okay, I don't need you anymore. Okay. Time for some executive cleaning for our layers here. So this one, they're gonna be at the top. So I should have done this earlier, but it just totally... What's it called? Totally slipped my mind, that's the thing. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. So, oh, okay, no, I don't need to color over those ones. I'll keep these on separate layers so that when I draw the bridge and all those other geometric shapes, they are separate. Oh. There we go. Well, actually, hmm. I feel like it'd be better to just redraw them, actually. <laughs> Since they're so small anyway. So I will just do that. The sky. There. color pick you again this time i made sure that they're on separate layers so that it's much easier to sort of edit yeah there fixing this up and right now you can see that the colors that i'm picking 
I'm not focusing on putting shadows just yet because values, right? Values, like I said, super, super important. And it's important to build them up early on, which is why I'm really taking my time with just putting down the base colors. Because thankfully with digital, it's super simple to just add shadows, right? And to sort things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to just cut things up anyway. In digital. <clears throat> They've been avoiding perspective your whole life. What do you find difficult about it, Elle? Maybe I could help. Because that's always how it starts. If something is hard, and you know, you usually say, oh, it's so hard. Yeah, keep going with that feeling. Keep going and vocalize it. What do you think is difficult? Because you might say something like, oh, like, the buildings are crooked, or something like that. I'd love to know. Yeah, exactly. Jesse has a lot of perspective videos as well. You can check that out. Here. And let me clean up the edges. And... <laughs> nice tree. Struggle with perspective also until starting a college class. Ooh, I have a reference photo that I'm using and I'm having trouble putting the buildings in the right place. Ah. Uh, I see. Because I think for, for drawing, at least in the beginning, what you should try your best to do is to try to accurately get the tapering. Right? I feel like in the early stages, it's kind of hard to juggle everything, like keeping an accurate drawing. But what I really recommend is to try to get this right. How it's tapering towards the vanishing point. Because I feel like that's one of the more important building blocks when it comes to perspective. <clears throat> yeah. And it's so nice. We got some, got some help in chat. Help each other in chat, Discord. <clears throat> and yeah, you know what? Turn this multiply layer on. Then pick up color layer. Oh, uh, okay. Now pick up hue. And then. So now I will put down the building. Yeah, it doesn't look very post-apocalyptic just yet, just because of how lush it is. And honestly, I kind of like it. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm going for. I'm going for a more lush post-apocalyptic scene. So maybe, okay, maybe I'll make this building roofless. There we go. Okay. Right there. And then I add some gray on here. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm just doing a different process, pretty much, but if you want to draw it, this is still important to get the colors right, regardless of how you do it. Just a little, little reminder. So, there. And then. And then again, I'm starting off with really desaturated colors, except for the, the trees, they're a little bit saturated. Nice, vibrant orange. 
but it's best if you start desaturated and then just add germ warfare i wonder if after the thumbnail i use it as a reference or i sketch the objects in the scene on a layer over the thumbnail i think that if you made the thumbnail then you could definitely sketch over it because it doubles as a sketch right but if you only traced over a photo then that's kind of iffy you know if you're practicing then i guess it's okay to trace but if you're if you're drawing to post it online then tracing is kind of a thin line but not saying that you're tracing <clears throat> but like you see i used my thumbnail as the as the base and i just traced over it so you could definitely definitely do that if you'd like color pick and okay maybe a little bit darker but you can see that stuff in the background I make it very low contrast Ooh. <laughs> low contrast like I mentioned so comparatively I want to make the background fairly light compared to the foreground and the midground which is where the main focus is going to be Excuse me. Yes, good. I like this background music. And another tip for for backgrounds actually. The color, the flat color that you put down is actually way more important than you think because it decides the color. So if I get rid of this, if I get rid of this blue, you can see how blue the fading buildings actually are. It's super, super blue. But then if you put it here against the, against the background, it kind of feels like a gray that's fading into the sky, right? But if you compare it without, you can see how blue it truly is. So it's important to put down the color. That flat color is more important than you think. Yeah, and thank you. I, that's why I've been super into background drawing. I've been avoiding it for so long, but honestly, I've fallen in love with it. I really love it. I need to do this more often. And let's see. Let me... Bloop. 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 Yeah, so I made this building in a separate layer. Actually, maybe I could make it darker. Yeah, so this is why I like using opacity brushes. Because you can see that it blends the color. And then I color pick it, the color that they make. And then that is what I, that is what I use. But I'm trying to see if that is the best... Best use for it. Hmm. Yeah, good one. Because I'll put some trees, I think, over that. And let me put. Where is my. Shit. Yeah, I think that's on my bucket list for this year. I wanna. I wanna make my own brushes. Because honestly, I bought a lot of brushes for. For background drawing and they all kind of don't like them they're all stinky <laughs> not that they're poorly made or anything it's just poorly made a poor fit for me i think i'd rather make my own 
than to to just rely on other people's brushes. And then color. Hey, I don't need this one. Yeah, I need to do the bottom. <clears throat> I think it would feel more apocalyptic if you lowered the saturation of the sky. Oh, true. But I didn't want it to be dreary. That's not really the the vibe I was going for. But you're totally right though, Quinn. You could make it a nice desaturated color. Oh. If if you wanted to. But for me, I kinda want it to be one of those if you look closely, you know. It's actually post apocalyptic. I never draw backgrounds. It's always solid color. <laughs> I mean, relatable. I was, I was the same too. I mean, was. I still am, honestly. <laughs> and I kind of want to go over that. How to make backgrounds for your drawn characters. Because that's honestly another good topic. trying to think hmm. yeah I do more stuff with creating creatures I'm trying to learn environments okay yeah yeah oh somebody said they wanted to hear say a joke okay I want to hear the joke now too now that I've read that also hi Kofer hello hello <laughs> what monster artist draws monsters And actually, realize that this is not very obviously broken. Yes, Kofer has arrived. Dun, dun, dun. Doop, doop, doop. And let's Where is my brush? Okay. Just gonna put some nice trees growing out of here. Yeah, just fall all around. Maybe add some green as well. Green and yellow. Ooh, why can't you trust an artist? Okay, why not? Why can I not trust an artist? I don't want to miss the punchline, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like quickly looking back and forth between the chat. Because they're a little bit shady and sketchy and they try to frame you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, that one's pretty good. I like that one. Well, color me impressed. That's a good joke. Okay. And let's see, what can I do from here now? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so delete. I think I don't need that sketch anymore. Hmm, okay, I need to clean you up. There we go. No blemishes. Because <clears throat> I don't get it. Oh no. See, you got the picture. Alright, thanks so much, Elle. Yeah, hopefully, you come back. See the final drawing. 
Bye bye. Well, actually, I don't want to make a cooking loop. And then I'm going to add a nice blue shadow. Multiply. Yes. Hmm, maybe I'll use dense watercolor for you. For now. So now I'm going to start adding in the shadows, finally. Or... Hmm... I'm going to turn it black and white again. Just to see... Okay... Yeah, I'm checking in black and white because now I get to see the values again. Actually, instead of doing this... I'll just do this. I'll make a new layer, fill it... Oh wait, turn it to color and then fill it with white. Same thing. Then this one is going to be my multiply layer. So I've finally put down all the base colors. So now I'm just gonna do a... What'd you miss? Not much, I just finished the, the coloring. Right there. I'm sorry, I got these sacks. I feel like that's way more trouble than it's worth. You just have to carry these sacks around all the time. Yeah, it's kind of like this video I saw. These guys are carrying ladders around all the time. And then they went to the cinema. And they were pretending like they were workers. While holding their... Their ladder. And then they got, got into a couple... Showings for free. <laughs> this is about carrying around the little ladder. People thinking they're construction people. <clears throat> okay. Why did the. <laughs> okay, more artist jokes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, why did the artist go to the bathroom? Is it because he had to Van Gogh? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Had to bang go to the bathroom. Am I right? Oh, am I right? Oh my gosh, I was right. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, no. <laughs> okay. Constant painted. Okay. Yeah, I like mine. <laughs> Constant painted. That's funny though. I mean, we have all the time in the world here. We have lots of time. Maybe feel free to leave your joke though. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I gotta, gotta put up the things, actually, the branches. Branches. See, so yeah, I guess this is a. Kind of an important part, so gotta talk about this a little bit. The branches. So that's what decides how many trees there are, right? Because right now it looks like one big tree. But then now try to imagine the shape of the tree, because usually, right, trees they're pretty equally distributed. And the reason why branches are important is because now you can tell, okay, if this is a tree, it'd be a little bit too thin right here. So either I move the branch a little bit more to the left, or I make the tree leaves bigger. So I kind of don't feel like making the tree leaves bigger. Okay, and <clears throat> it is almost Monday, my dudes. Uh. uh. I need to stretch. It's a big old stretch. There we go. No. Your joke about the toy boat sailed right past me. It went under the radar. <laughs> it, uh... I don't know. It blew past me. But do tell. Do tell your boat joke. Ooh. 
Let's see, we have a joke already. Why do ducks have tail feathers? Does anyone know? Ducks. Tail feathers. I'm not sure. Why do they have tail feathers? Also, I like the emoji use. <laughs> Weight distribution? Aerodynamics? They're <laughs> classic. I, I definitely heard that joke before. Cover up their butt clacks. And where is it? No. Haha, <laughs> but <laughs> I know, right? Pinnacle. Pinnacle of comedy. And then this is on the same layer. Okay, just making sure. Ooh, slightly larger toy boat. And... <laughs> I'll double... Oh, check your chat. Did I miss anything? Maybe I should make this a little bit bigger. This branch. There. And I kind of just want the trees to be growing on this side so that there's a little bit of a clearing, by the way. And then maybe put another thing down here. Yeah, so you can see that I'm not adding some harsh, harsh, darker, whatchamacallits on it, trees. None of them are harshly shaded just yet. Because I feel like I want to focus on this. Maybe it's a little bit too, too dense. So let me get rid of that. But there. There. Oh, somebody said bye. Who? Oh, Layla. All right. Yo, wait, Layla. Before you go, make like a tree and leave. <laughs> See you around. <laughs> I haven't wanted to use that one. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Layla, she's gonna branch out to do new things now. No more. She's gonna fly the coop. And... Where do I... Can I add some? Please? There. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Do tell. I'm here. I'm multitasking. Okay, just making sure that the branches are all good right now. Joke's here. <laughs> no, I like them. We have all flavors of jokes here. Maybe at some point, please, you could add some birds and ducks. Yes, maybe I can. I'd love to do that. Maybe have, like... The migration thing. I know. All the birds. <laughs> we'll see. We can definitely add that later. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to adding some shadow now. Now that I like the thingy. Uh, don't see. Okay, not that dark. So right now, I'm just starting off with a nice kind of gray color because I will figure out the shadow color in a little bit. A hedgehog. Yeah, sure. Those ones I could easily add. Okay, so I got like... What is BJD? Art mannequins. 
to help me with posing and anatomy. Okay. Yeah. You have the 3D models. Or the mannequins, I should say. Oh, ball jointed doll. Oh yeah, I had one of those. These guys, right? I could draw them. Right? And there. These guys. Somebody's came by. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, Conrado. Thank you. But this lab is really interesting. Okay, I hope you're back. I hope you come back for more because this isn't the last. Bye bye. Oh. Wait a minute. Color break. And I think, yeah, maybe I'll add the shadow of the thing here. <laughs> we have Sonic the Hedgehog? We'll see. We'll see if we can. Because if I add Sonic the Hedgehog, it'll be fan art. I want this to be original. Iggy Classic. A certified Iggy Classic. Here. And some shadow on here. Just a little bit. There. Hi! Ooh, welcome back, level one. Level one goblin. I'm great, thanks for asking. <laughs> do not steal. Yes, do not steal my OC. Sorry. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, sound wave, welcome back. Return of the King. There. And there. Yeah, so right now I'm just adding the the values, the shadows, with the lighting, as some people know it. And right now, you can see that I'm using the purest gray. So not much color. So now I will add color. Oop. Yeah. Much nicer, vibrant color. There. All I really did was lock transparency and then added a more saturated color for the for the multiply layer. From <laughs> all that hurts my back. Oh no. It's like I say, drawing is not supposed to hurt. Physically at least. It should not hurt physically. <laughs> So, yeah, I actually got a brand new chair. It's pretty nice. It's pretty cozy. And also, I got a new mic. <laughs> okay, I will say, I am familiar, and I would love to talk about it, but we're not allowed to talk about that. But, I will say, all I'll say, Shadow Beam, awesome. It's very good. <laughs> but, anyway. Yeah, I want to show you guys my mic, actually. So before, I just used my headset mic, but then, you know, I could be really far away like this, or really, really, really close. <laughs> really, really close to thing. Like... <clears throat> so let's see. I'm just uh, double checking chat. Crisp voice. <laughs> oh yes. Hello. I missed the pillow joke. Tell me about the pillow joke. There. There. <laughs> this is coming out amazing. It's not even done yet. And thank you so much. And I'm trying to think if I should merge at this point. That's what's running in my head right now. And another thing running in my head right now, what is... What is the pillow joke? <laughs> hello. Hello. Classic. Classic <laughs> phone guy. The voice line. Why does the dove get to be the symbol of peace when the pillow has more feathers? <laughs> What's more heavy, 
uh, a kilogram of steel or a kilogram of feathers? Kilogram of feathers. Kilogram of steel. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Microwave, that's such a good opener. <laughs> More than. <laughs> like microwave noises. Genius. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I think this is my curse. Having to multitask. It just makes you bad at jokes. Don't multitask. Alright. Multiply. There we go. And let's see. Yeah, right now I'm just making sure that all the shadows are good. Because once the shadows are all good, I will merge them all together. And what time is it? Okay, it's double checking. <laughs> a kilogram of nothing. Huh. Well, I don't know what's heavier, but a kilogram of nothing sounds like a whole lot of nothing. So I definitely think the other two is heavier. Oh, Perfect. So I have this. And then again, go back a little bit. Always double check your values. So now you can see the comparison. So here it is before and after. So you can see that this, the shadows are more defined, right? And you can see that I'm starting off with the big shapes, right? I'm not going in here and shadowing like every single leaf, right? Every single tree. I'm focusing on the big shapes right now. Because the big shapes are what matter. So comparison, boom, better lighting as long as we focus on the values. Value your values, as I like to say. <clears throat> Foxy, Foxy talks? Oh my gosh, I've never watched a movie either. My friends did. They watched the movie without me. But it's kind of my fault though. I had other plans. Yeah, they were they were saying that Balloon Boy was the scariest part of the movie. <laughs> so, I I don't know what they mean by that. But all I know from Balloon Boy is he's like, "Hello." <laughs> That's all I know about that guy. I don't know what he does in the movie. Yeah, also I heard Matt Pat was in the movie. That sounds awesome. There. And let's see. There we go. And multiply. Okay, I'm just double checking. Uh, yeah, they are going to make a sequel. I heard that it did well enough that they want to do a sequel. Yeah, good on them. <laughs> yeah, but imagine... I heard that they used the Living Tombstone song. So what if they used the second song? It's been so long. Na -na 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 -na. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 Some banger songs. And all the memes about the cupcake, yeah. <laughs> Saw that too. Ho 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 ho. Ho 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 ho. Hmm. Trying to think. Okay. Gotta think of what to do next. Because I think. Hmm. I should have kept it on separate layers. But I have an idea. There. Moves it on the bridge. <laughs> it's kind of a roundabout way of doing it, but just like duplicating it. And then eventually I'm going to merge it. 
that is why that is why I wanted to do this. There. There. Da, 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 da. Uh hold up. There we go. I totally forgot about that one. And yes. Did I there? No. No, okay, never mind. Okay, this should be good. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to what? <laughs> so okay, let me double check. I miss a lot in chat actually. Uh too late. Oh, somebody's talking about Quinn is talking about SSS, subsurface scattering. I know I'm improving <laughs> Yeah, subsurface scattering, baby. And welcome back. Mianu, welcome back. Yeah, what to draw? Good question. Good trash in Shadow Beam. Draw Mozart. Oh my gosh. Why didn't I think of that? Oh okay, now I for now I remember what I need the shadow as well. I forgot the the ground. There we go. I knew something was missing. Mm. Because now I'm thinking of merging everything together now. But before that, maybe I'll add some lighting. Low dodge. Have some nice orange lighting. My favorite layer, glow dodge. There. And I'm only adding there, glow dodge on the parts that need to be brighter. So right there. It's not looking post very post-apocalyptic, but don't worry, I I'll be working on that. And okay, maybe not that bright. Now the sky looks kind of dull in comparison. So. Oh, and here's another tip actually. So notice, right, the sky. I'm not just doing this. This is why I like the triangle. The the triangle color wheel, color box, instead of this one. Because it really shows you the range better. Because. In the color wheel, you just go up when really that's not always the case. Uh, not always accurate, but this one, it shows the value and the saturation of the colors. So you can see that the more it gets saturated, the darker it gets actually. So this is why I like the triangle better. So now, I want to make this more saturated, but you can see that making it more saturated makes it darker. So what I do is I move it up. I move it up to like yellow. Because technically yellow is brighter. Or like green. I should say yellow green. Teal. There. I think this one I'll make it more saturated. Uh, color picker. Boop. More saturated. Oh. Hold on. Not this one. This one. And I should save. I haven't saved my file yet. Oh, is there a way you can make more contrast between the building and the bridge? They seem like they're blended together. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, once I merge them together, I'm just waiting on merging everything together. But it, that is a really good eye. It's a very good thing you noticed there. So, yeah, amazing architecture is Bethune. Yeah, good point, Once Artist. I'm just double checking right now, making sure everything is in order before I merge everything. Uh, okay, too bright. Yeah, because right now I want, I want it to be vibrant, but not that bright. So maybe move some more red. No, maybe overlay would be good later, but. Hmm. Yeah, good enough. I'll merge them together now. Merge together. Now you can see everything's on one layer. And then I could... Ah, freedom. 
<laughs> My favorite part. I'm a character artist. I don't do buildings. Me neither. What's a good brush for clouds? Oh, yeah. I should add clouds, actually. I was about to add that. I usually add them for last. But for clouds? I just like... Something... That makes it look soft and like nice blending. For example, I like to use a br blending brush like this one that I could make soft edge like that and then blend other edge together like that. But I'll save I'll save clouds for last. There's a reason why. Because hmm, or maybe I shouldn't save them for last. Hmm. Decision decisions. Yeah, maybe I'll add at least some unrendered clouds. There. Just to give it some more dimension. Or actually, let's see. I think this looks good. Just add the cloud. I kind of like this. <laughs> okay. Big cloud. There. Because clouds can be super powerful. They can be used as a spotlight, pretty much. But that's why I like to save them for last. Because I don't know what we're featuring yet. Do you guys want me to add birds and like... Hedgehogs? <laughs> uh, what's it called? Copyright free hedgehogs? No. I'm a creature artist and I don't do buildings either. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Hmm. Yeah, this should be good enough. And good enough for now for the clouds. And I really want to grab this. So now I'm going to use my brush. And then slowly add in the shadows. There. <laughs> what time is it? Okay. More than enough time. A mutated bird. I could. Just to add to that post-apocalyptic vibe. There. So now you can see that I'm starting to add in the harder edges because I imagine that this tree will be separate. So I'm adding this little thing here, this little part of separation. And here's another thing, if you're digitally painting, try not to make new colors. So what I mean by new colors is going through the color wheel again, adding them. So this is why it took my time because now I have the colors that I will, most of the colors that I will need. <laughs> there. Actually. Hmm. I wonder. I'm gonna use a tone curve. Uh, let me see how that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see how it looks before and after. I kind of like that. So, the tone curve? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have a way to show it right now. Maybe I'll just screenshot it. So what I do for the tone curve is there. Let me show you guys screenshot there and because I can't make a new scene right now OBS but this is the tone curve there and there so what I did this used to be a straight line it used to be like this 
but then I added like little dips so you can see that I made the S shape so what this means is that I made the light here brighter and then the shadows here darker so it added more contrast so that's what the S shape means so it makes the lights brighter and the darks darker and I'm going to do opacity so that it's not as intense but I kind of like it there we go Yeah, we have a duck with a sore leg. Yeah, that'll be our finishing touch, probably. Also, all right. No, they're just BRBing. <laughs> Shadow Bean, we'll be back. And there. And let's see. Yeah, because honestly, I think after after you figure out your composition and you <clears throat> figure out the composition and the, the lighting i'd say this part it takes the longest because you're just prettying it up making sure everything's in order this part is the easiest but also the part that takes the longest i'd say because now you're just making it look nice and then also his classic brush, Iggy Kusa. Or actually, let me pull it to this. Yeah, this brush is just like, <laughs> it's just a, what's it called? It just spans this shape right here, and then just makes it random. So I made this brush myself. It's the most basic grass brush you could ever make. There. And then there. A collar region. Yo, I really wanna play Here's the Kingdom. <laughs> it's just that I don't have the time. <laughs> and I'm playing other games right now. I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV. Let me just clean up these shapes. Maybe since this is post apocalyptic, maybe mutant city creatures. Ooh. Yeah, I want to save the characters for last because I think I really want to focus on prettying up the environment before that. I will add the creatures you guys recommend, but eventually, they gotta be, I'm gonna save those for last, I think. Also right now, I'm trying to make the shadow a bit less intense and hard, hard edged. There. Excuse me. Yeah. I wanted I wanted it to be peaceful looking. Because after all, it is post. You know? Emphasis on post. So maybe I'll add a car. <clears throat> add like a little <laughs> little thing peeking out. I don't know if you can tell this is a car. <laughs> there. Yeah, usually I, I should have added this earlier on, but I totally forgot about cars. <laughs> there. Which adds like a little bit. Close enough. <laughs> Make the little creatures be human sized. Yeah. I was thinking of adding something here. Maybe we could add something on the bridge. Da 
just making sure everything is in order. And I think I need to tone this down. It's a little bit too hot on the lighting. There. Just gonna darken this a little bit. <clears throat> and then add the color back. Sometimes you just forget to add things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because after all, this is how to draw a forest. And I wanna really wanna pretty up this forest. I think I'll add some bushes in the middle too. I kind of want to add trees falling, or not trees, uh, leaves, sorry. Okay. Yeah, and you can see that the farther I go, the less dark the shadows get, because it's trying to make it low contrast, like I mentioned. Because high contrast attracts a lot of attention. So that's why I wanted to talk about value earlier, because forests very very dense, and it's easy to get lost, lost in the sauce. So now, making sure everything is in order. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, what else is chat saying? <clears throat> it's a project. Working on it for nearly six years, wow. I don't think I've ever worked on anything for that long. Oh, and I should I should fix the surface actually of this this place. There. There. And right there. Yeah, I think usually I would have, I would have merged a little bit later, but since this one is, you know, I just want to get the point across, I decided to go for a more painterly approach. But again, this works if you're drawing either way. So it doesn't have to be just for painting that this works. <laughs> cluck cluck <laughs> and right there where is this okay so now I'm making the hard edged hard edged stuff pink <laughs> yeah, second time's a charm. <laughs> second time's a charm with that joke. Yeah, no, like, also, make sure to zoom out at this point, right? Because you wouldn't want to get too lost in the sauce. I like chickens too. Yeah, have you guys ever seen the, the chicken hypnotism trick? Where you draw a straight line in front of a chicken and then they get mesmerized by it? That's super, super interesting. Yes. Chicken. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, right now it's just a grand balancing act. 
of the colors. Because that is the thing about forests. They're dense. Very dense. And sometimes it's hard to capture that. Without getting lost in the sauce. Also, need to push this up. I think this is shadow from the... So maybe if this time's a little bit brighter. Cooler. Oh, maybe it is. Let's see. <laughs> if I was a chicken, I'd do the same. Mm, yes. <laughs> Ooh. You know, I've always wondered about that. Zombies, right? They're supposed to be like goofy guys. They're like, they're like rotting zombies. But then how can they chew? How do they have enough strength to bite? You know, zombies. Zombies wouldn't be as OP. If they don't have bite strength. <clears throat> yeah. I think I think you could still get the virus. I think a virus zombies their most dangerous aspect is the virus itself and not the fact that they're carriers is uh, their most dangerous most dangerous thing about them. Great. And I know uh Going back a little bit to my drawing, monster artist brought this up earlier, right? That the building and the bridge kind of look like they're merged together. Sometimes you could make that intentional, actually, because if they merge together, it means that they're less there's less detail, right? Because if you detail every single little thing, it's kind of hard to focus, right? Because where you put the most detail is usually is usually where people look. So if you detail everything, it kind of becomes hard to see. So now, that's why I wanted to put something on here, later, that we could decide on. Put something right smack dab in the middle. <clears throat> I'm a little quiet? Hello? <laughs> okay, sorry. I need to get closer to my mic. <laughs> Yeah, oops. Yeah, I would say Shadow Beam. <laughs> I would say Shadow Beam for you. Oh, yeah, you mean the, the Cordyceps. The zombie ant. Spooky, spooky. But yeah, how about now? Am I too close? I feel like this is a little bit too close. The mic is literally right next to me. So let me know if it's too loud. <clears throat> yeah, too close? Alright. <clears throat> yeah, because I'm pretty sure this is the first stream I've ever done with the mic. Oh, cancel. There. And then now I'm gonna double check. Uh. Okay. Double check my values. Honestly, it could be better, but I think it's definitely clearer. So, what is it? There? Yeah, I want to keep this part a little bit low contrast, meaning that it's not much of a difference. Actually, I'm going to add some more detail onto this building. But again, I'm making it low contrast so that that's not the first place where people look. 
see maybe I'll add more detail onto the bridge as well. Yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit focused mode on here. There. Okay, let me double check. Yeah, the black and white thing should be possible on Krita, because all it really is is a, la a layer mode. It's white. I filled it with white the the brightest one and then set it to color so that all that detail becomes black and white So I should be adding the windows now. Technically, I should be able to see here. And I'm trying to keep it, should keep it lower thing. Maybe, hmm. I think it's even worth adding the what's it called? It's worth even adding the windows now. I think I'll add it later. I'll come back to it. Sure. Yeah, sketchbook. I've seen some cool artwork made with sketchbook. It's insane. <clears throat> yeah, Krita. Krita, Metabang. Those are like the go-to's I see. Yeah, I think what I'll do is add a little bit of contrast on here so that it's not completely bright. Yeah, maybe I'll add more shadow actually. Multiply. Blue. Okay, I'm gonna darken this grass here a little bit. There. Perfect. Okay, I kind of like this compared to before. Zooming out all the way. And I'll add some other stuff down there. Add. Well, thanks, thanks again for supporting though. I know ads kind of interrupt the thing, but don't worry. More free stuff. More free. What should we call it? More free videos and streams with ads. Yeah. <laughs> Do I actually have to be dedicated entry? <laughs> It could be from 200 years ago. So, for the submissions, the songs is drawn by you. That is what matters. It's okay if it was from 200 years ago. And then on here, I think I'll add you and watercolor. I'm gonna fix up this this thing right here. There. Hmm. I think I'll extend this a little bit, actually. The shadow. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, this is around the part where I'm kind of being quiet because I'm focusing, really focusing on cleaning this up. 
All right. See you around, Quinn. Let's see. <laughs> Consciousness. Yeah, it's your... It's your past incarnations drawing, huh? Yeah. Again, so long as it's yours. Even if it is from a past life. Bye bye, bye Quinn. Hmm. Should add branches actually. There. And I'm adding a bit, a touch of like purple onto here. Because I noticed that I'm using a bit of a bluer. Blue or what's it called? Blue branch color. And so now I'm adding these branches up at the front. And then I'll make them fade a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got an idea actually. So. I wonder <laughs> if it intrudes that much. Or let me color pick. I think of adding a lamp post, but I don't know how good that would be. And then maybe that's where our birds could be. There you go. Yeah, so jog my memory. What kind of what kind of birds did you guys want to do again? And like a hedgehog? A nondescript, non-blue hedgehog. <laughs> Help, I can't stop drawing. That's good. Keep drawing. Keep drawing. It's so fun. Ducks and pigeons. Do you guys have a specific duck in mind? <laughs> okay, wait. I gotta have an idea. Oh, this one? It'd be kind of funny, but let me let me see if it sticks. But then it makes it fan art, though, if I do this. There, there. I feel like this would be such a funny idea to do. And then there you go. And he's running a lemonade stand. There you go. There. <laughs> I would not do this though, but this would be so funny. I wish we could do this. <laughs> I gotta think of something original. <sighs> Got any grapes? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad somebody knows. <laughs> And then add some nondescript debris on the ground here. And then a little bit of the sky. Probably. <clears throat> Quaking. There you go. I think it's really coming along. And I think with the time that we have, actually, this is pretty good. <laughs> I think it could have been better, but... It's okay. This is the best you could do. Actually, I should... Clean display color. There we go. And then I'll add some implied. There we go. Fly trees growing out of the growing out of the buildings. 
Voilà. I think I'm, I should add some green as well. There. There. <laughs> you want to live here? That's nice. Yes, this is a pleasant post apocalyptic. Uh, stressing the post, you know. No more apocalypse. It's all over. It's all over. <laughs> oh, what is that? <clears throat> Maybe I should add some puddles too, somehow, but. Okay, let's see. There and add some shadow. Yeah, so if you want to learn about how to add these shadows, I pretty much cover it in the How to Draw Tree stream. So, like I said, this is supposed to be a companion piece to that one. <laughs> All right, that is called the hamster song. I totally forgot. But yeah, I love hamsters. Hamsters so cute. Hamster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've only had two, and they live long, long lives. Yeah, they were siblings. I had them at the same time. The care of them. But I don't think I could get another pet. It's too too much responsibility for me right now. There. And I kind of wish maybe I'll have it. There. That was way nicer. Added a touch of blue. There. What time is it? Okay. Okay. I'm curious how they became Hamter. I don't think you become Hamter. It chooses you. There. And... So I have no idea what kind of ducks to add. So I'll look up a picture of a duck. Duck. Excuse me. Yeah, I was thinking of the mallard specifically. Okay, there you go. Okay, I think I'll keep the lamppost. They kind of grew on me. And I like them. Well, let me add some guardrails on this bridge. There we go. And I think later I'll add some vines. How could I forget about vines, actually? <laughs> Vine. Only spoonful. <laughs> but a uh, only spoonful. But not that kind of vine. <laughs> um, talking about bramble and overgrowth. Right after I add these ducks. There. And then they got a nice rich brown to them. Yeah, they're gonna be real tiny because I want this to be to scale. There. And then there we go. Little duck. Easy. And then, oh, sorry. 
Uh, what is it called? Pigeons? Okay, pigeons. Pigeon. There we go. Oh, you have to head out? Alright. Yeah, you can watch the rest later. And I don't think there's long anyway. I'm gonna go a little bit over time just to add finishing touches, make it pretty. But it's not that long, great. So. Yeah, thank you, Bill, for coming. I'm somehow between ham and cheese. <laughs> ham and cheese. And then pigeons on the other side. There we go. Yeah, they always have this nice green and purple to them. Green. Purple. There we go. They're all just hanging out. There. I think I'll add some brickwork. Some nice contrast onto the thing here. There. And there. <clears throat> but yeah, let me just one. Yeah, so many tissues. I know what you mean. Like, a month ago, that was me. It was like... It was as if somebody was putting a toilet brush on my nose and it hurt. <laughs> so like, I've been there and I hope you get well soon. Just gotta get some bed rest. Take your, take your medications. And you'll be golden. And I'm glad you got to make it, you know, nice and chill time. Nice and chill time, baby. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add more. Maybe. <laughs> and then. Hmm. I'll add some red. Because it is fall. So I'll be adding some. Nice red. Oh, not that. Red uh, vines. There. Yeah, I, I think I want to make a vine brush too. I think I should do that. There. At some point. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> Pigeons? Yeah, I just added two of each, you know. You can't have... Can't have them be too lonely. Can't just add one. There. And some little because I don't want it to be too noticeable on here. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna add some more. Rebels. And I wanted to add some bushes at the bottom. No, thank you. Like I said, this is post-apocalyptic, right? This is fall. So, of course, the perfect season. Fall. I think I'll take, like, maybe ten more minutes. Because <laughs> I'm... kind of like how this turned out. There. There. Because technically, there should be a little bit more grassy, this bridge. Grassy and viney. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of green, a little bit. So there, and a little bit, I mean. Darker. Oop. <laughs> oh, and... Yeah, for the people who stuck around, thanks so much for sticking around for this long. So now I gotta ask, who do you guys want to put on the bridge? Who is the centerpiece person? Or what? What do you guys want to put? Any suggestions? 
that isn't Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> or I think I'd prefer like a non-IP. Here we go. I want it to be an original. Is it like an explorer person? Is it like a cyborg? A robot? What do you guys want to put? <laughs> a duck. We already put the duck. Unless you want a giant duck? Person in gas mask. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I want to see more suggestions. Because it'll be easy peasy to add them. So I want to see you guys talk amongst each other. Among each other? <laughs> Would it be funny if I just completely ignored everything? And just did this? <laughs> There you go, this is the guy on the bridge. Now that would be awesome. There we go. <laughs> Amongst us. Uh, here. Yeah, I'll just merge them together actually. Okay, Peppermint Pink Tiger. Okay, you guys are thinking of like cool creature designs. Pink Tiger. Okay. Let's see. Pink Cat. Duck eating cheese. Okay. I can do duck eating cheese right now. Where is it? There you go. Oh wait, no. That's kind of too much. In there. Add some holes on the cheese. Some holy cheese. There you go. <laughs> very, very small. There. Pink tiger. Hmm. I guess so. That is a void demon. That sounds pretty cool. Maybe I'll do that. I'll design like a little pink tiger void demon. That'll be our center person. What time is it? And I'm making sure everything's in order. Hmm. Yeah, I really feel like I should add more shadows onto the front. There. <clears throat> so let me add this. Add some of these on the tree on the building you guys wanted a pink tiger <laughs> i don't know if i could do it justice though but i will just add the pink tiger where is it tiger i need reference though Tiger. There we go. Hmm. I'll just draw it on top. Okay, that's a little bit. There. Kind of looks like a Minecraft pig right now. Yeah, I don't know if I could add a Void Demon. Maybe, maybe some some other time we could. Just to make it fit. There. But yeah, I guess while I draw this tiger, uh, I want to recap what we did. So again, most important thing when it comes to drawing forests is the composition 
and the values. Those two are the most important. Because forests, right? They can get pretty hectic and it's easy to get lost and not do a proper job of shading them. So I want to show you guys the full full process, right? I want to show everyone the process, at least the one that I go through, to really help and create a nice, nice and orderly background. Nice and orderly forest. Here, add touches of white. <laughs> and then blue stripes. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah. They're just kind of living there now. Yeah, no people in this one. In there. <laughs> Whenever I somebody mentions pink cat, I think of the cat from Grim Adventures of Billy and Randy. That's the image that pops in my head. If you guys have ever watched it. Yeah, Billy has this pink cat. Um, let's see. Here. And put the stripes on the cheek. <laughs> Pink Panther. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too. Milkshakes. I kind of want to go for bubble tea now. Can I talk about milkshakes? Cool drinks. And it actually just started snowing on my end too. Okay, let me... Yeah, you know what? Maybe I could go a little bit more over time. <laughs> just a little bit. And then... Well, actually, no. I shouldn't do this. I will make a mask. But then erase it. And that way... I'll just add it back in. Oh, oops. And there you go. You got, you got your pink tiger nice and cozy over there. Yeah, because the last thing I really want to fix up is the, the shadows. They feel kind of desaturated. So I will make them more saturated. Saturation. Mm, maybe not. Maybe overlay. Overlay always has never failed me. There. Let's see the comparison. Okay, maybe a little bit darker. Boop. Yeah. <clears throat> Milkshake is the tiger's name? I guess we could agree on that. Duck Chuck. What about... So Chuck the duck cheese. The cheese duck. <laughs> I can't talk. Oh my gosh. There. I'm gonna... Hey, touch up a little bit. With some... Thingies here. And then multiply. Okay. More saturated. Okay, not that. More saturated. And there. Yeah. So I'm tr oh, I guess the clouds too. I have not touched the clouds. And then I'll wrap up for real this time. No jokes, no goofs, no gaffes. This is the last thing I will change. And then I will wrap up. There. And there. Let's 
see. I think the shadow on the clouds are really too dark. And the... Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the, the brush I like to use. Just a nice soft blending brush. Because I like to do it on my own. I like to build the shapes myself. Anyway. And yeah. Yeah, so again, remember, this is an exclusive to just painting. If you really want to draw, this also works. Because you'll still need color. I just wanted to do this way because color. But yeah, I think this is it. This is the best I can do for today. So thanks so much everyone for joining me, for being so nice and active in chat. And remember, for not just a YouTube channel, we're also an art school. So if you want to join me, if you want to draw with me or other instructors, I'm actually having a winter class, winter camp with, uh, with other students. So if you want to be a student too, uh, check out our website. Check out website and sign up with me, Harper Josh. Or if you want to have a class, a weekly class, you could also check that out. There's lots of different classes with Jesse, with Faye, with me, with Arunia, and many, many talented instructors. And look forward to next week's stream, right? More streams for next week. And thanks again for coming, everyone. Yeah, see ya. See ya next time. Bye bye. See ya.